Hello, welcome back to ATCB, another one of our overview videos, which are not quite a review, not quite an unboxing, a bit of everything, a bit of everything really. Um, if what you're after is more of a playthrough video experience, um, in the video description below you'll find a link to our playthrough of Archipelago. Um, but yeah, let's look at what you get with Archipelago first, what you get in the box, which is this stuff, which is pretty good. Um, a lot of it. Big loads of stuff, lots of sturdy cardboard pieces that represent the archipelago you are exploring, double-sided, with kind of tile icons for the different resources on them. Uh, speaking of resources, uh, there are six in the game, all represented by these chunky painted wood blocks. Um, I feel like I'm over-explaining really standard board game <laughs> components. These um, are called cubes. These are called cubes. Um, you get uh, these nice resource trackers for them. This represents the internal market, and this is the export market. Um, you get these tracker systems. Uh, this one represents kind of population versus rebellion, mm -hmm. um, and this one represents the amount of available workers. Um, you get these uh, available cards to buy. What are these called again? Evolution, Evolution cards? cards? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which are different things you can buy and your faction can exploit and make use of. And in fact, other factions can as well, but they often have to pay you for the privilege. Um, this itself represents uh, the board, the archipelago you're exploring, with all these little meeples uh, of your faction. And you get little boats as well and discs and stuff. Um, there are There's some goal cards, kind of individual goals for you to pursue as well as a general one for everyone to pursue. Yep. Um, more evolution cards here, which also have crises on the uh, on the back of them. Um, which are kind of things that you have to overcome as a group together. So, what is Archipelago? Well, after I've shown you all the components already, uh, Archipelago is a uh, is a resource balancing Euro game and worker placement Euro game um, where you are playing competing yet also somewhat cooperating um, colonial agents, factions, I don't know how you define it, yeah. in um, a period of, I don't know, 1500s through to the 1800s, I guess, I think what it says. Um, in an anonymous archipelago, and you're bouncing resources against each other, you're overcoming crises together and alone, you're also trying to uh, fulfil your own personal goals while also having a shot at the, the generalised group goal, and all the meantime you're trying to make sure rebellion doesn't occur, unless your goal is to be the separatist, um, at which point, yeah, if, if you get that, basically, you are trying to make rebellion happen, yeah. um, as opposed to the other goals. So there's a little, you could see it as a traitor mechanic, I guess, um, but it's a kind of potential traitor mechanic along the lines of, uh, you know, Shadows of a Camelot would be a, a game we've played recently that's a good comparison of maybe there's a traitor or maybe there isn't, or yeah. Dead of Winter, you know, and that's similar kind of like, we don't know if someone's trying to screw us through the majority of the game. It's also the exact opposite of the pacifist who wants the game to end with a certain amount of difference between the... Between numbers. the rebellion and the population. Yeah, yeah. it's been nice and quiet. Yes, um, because it's worth noting that if you, for everyone but the separatist, if the rebellion count ever goes over the population count, the game ends and everyone loses. Yes. Yes. So, there we go. Um, how you actually play it... Um, you start the game with just one central sea tile and spawn some around it, basically, by, by a mechanic at the beginning of the game. As the game goes forward, you have a certain number of actions you can take per turn, a number which increases as the game goes on. Mm -hmm. um, you pop these onto this kind of action tracker board in order to take the actions. All the different actions you can take are Deep breath. Um, buying, well, not buying, harvesting and selling different resources. Ah. Well done. Um, <laughs> uh, making babies, <laughs> making breeding, essentially making your population grow internally. Um, taxes. Taxes, uh, taking taxes, exploring to add new tiles to the board, um, building ships, building um, things, you, well, things you can put on the board, like places, I guess, like churches, yep. towns, ports, all of which have slightly different mechanics. Um, am I missing out anything? Using in your ports, ports and markets, which just yeah, do using them as the function than... for doing things. Yeah, like selling two things instead of selling one thing. Yeah, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, is that pretty much it? 
Yeah. That's, I feel like I'm yeah. missing something. Yeah, migrating. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. well, we didn't say that. Oh, migrating. Yeah, moving. sorry, migrating. Uh, moving your stuff uh, around around board. Uh, at the beginning of every overall turn, you'll hit a couple of crises, uh, which tend to do things like... Um, they basically cause your meeple to fall over. <laughs> um, and if your meeple uh, are still over by the end of the crisis, you can't use them in that turn to kind of do anything in particular on, on whatever tile they're on. Um, and you tend to get through the crisis by giving up resources, like donating resources to, to get people stood up again, make people happy again, is the idea behind it. Uh, the only other mechanic I can think of is that there are exploration tokens, which you get by successfully exploring Um it should be noted that exploration is not always successful. If you happen to draw one of these tiles um, and it doesn't click onto two other tiles on the board in any way, then it's unsuccessful. Mm-hmm. Uh, but exploration tokens basically represent any one resource you want for any action you want to do that, use that resource for. Um, did I just explain Archipelago in uh, about Crisis, five you've minutes? you've got the actions, you've got evolution. Evolution cards that you buy. I kind of already mentioned them. Yeah. Um, so you didn't yeah, you mentioned the rotating. You, but I didn't mention that they uh-huh. rotate. As time goes on, yeah, basically, if you don't, if you do or you don't buy an evolution card, a number of them rotate. But more if you don't buy an evolution card. Yep. Rotating basically just means they get more pricey or less pricey, depending on the individual card. So there's a certain amount of kind of you want to rotate it so that other people won't buy it or other people will buy it or various and sundry different mechanisms like that. Uh, some of these are wonders, which can themselves contribute victory points towards the end of the game. And, um, yeah, and at the end of the game, unless there's been a revolution, the player with the most victory points wins based on victory points from their goal, victory points from other people's goals, victory points from the common goal, and any victory points from, I think they're just wonders that have the victory points on these. That's Archipelago. Thank you. Um, we're going to do a round table now. Um, and the first part of the round table is going to cover the game and what the game is like and the mechanics of the game. The second half of the, uh, of the round table, fair warning for everyone, we're going to talk a lot about colonialism and post-colonialism and whether this game... Well, we'll, we'll see, we'll subject. see, handles the subject with any level of tact whatsoever. Um, yeah, so let's do that. Okay, so um, Archipelago, uh, just game-wise. Um, John, why don't you start us off? I like it. Mm-hmm. I... Well, that's that <laughs> Thanks, action. It's got a... I like worker placement and making numbers go up and things. Mm-hmm. And I think the, the boards do the like spreadsheet management quite well. They do. They do. Everyone remembers to do it. And yes. doesn't like charge on to the next bit of it. Mm-hmm. Yes, Sam. Um, My one disappointment yeah, yeah. is it, it doesn't help that we've always played the short games so far, but I feel like you don't have time to properly get into the building an economy. And if even if you do get into building an economy, it doesn't actually matter because the aim of the game isn't usually the economy, it's usually like pineapples or yeah. rebellion or something. Something like that. Um, other than that. I, I agree, and like yeah, we have only played the short game, but it is it's a nice little, it's a nice little euro where bits and pieces, and it is little for a euro. Yeah, for a euro, okay. Where bits and pieces just kind of of mechanics just slot into each other nicely. Yes. Everything has an effect on other things, which is nice on like whether it's on how much export prices are if you harvest too much or like all that or sell too much and all that kind of thing. Um, the exploration's fun. Yeah. When it works. Hmm. <laughs> Not referencing the playthrough video. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's a couple of things I would complain about mechanically. One would be that the exploration doesn't always work, which just feels like a frustrating non-entity of a, of a mechanic sometimes. Mm. Um, and also, related to... We have played, and again, I'll try not to spoil that, we've played two <laughs> games of Archipelago. Yeah. Yep. Sure game. Both games, w- people have won. <laughs> and that... <laughs> That people. <laughs> Matt, you can't not. I think you're just going to fail and not spoil it. I can't. Uh, it, a person around the table won both Archipelago games. Mm, yeah. That person, both games, did not think they were going to win yeah. for 95% of that game. Mm. And when they did win, it wasn't completely out of nowhere, but it was a bit 
Oh. Mm. And so, is, is that is that because some players are slightly more competitive than other ones? I don't Maybe. think competitive. Why would a competitive no. player be less likely to think they're going to win? I don't think so. I think it, it comes back to the problem that you pointed out at the, at the beginning, John. In the it's a very long game, so you don't want to play longer games. But because it's a short, because we're playing the short version of the game, and like you generally kind of play to build up, or a lot of people play to build up, and you know you think, oh, objectives might yeah, be a later yeah. thing. A lot of times you're going like, oh, I'll, I'll get this and I'll build that. That's useful oh, for me. And oh, someone's start won. To get an, oh, the game's over. And, yeah. someone, and that is a really long time. That's like two and a half hours, but it feels like it should go on for a and lot I longer. I think than the that. victory. I think the victory. Uh, Conditions, not conditions. How much you score can be kind of opaque. Yeah, it really can. Because you don't know the majority of the goals around the table. Yeah, it's true. you might just win someone else's without knowing it. Which is what has happened essentially. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, and you don't know when the game is going to end as well. Yeah. Because I don't think we mentioned. Yeah, yeah, no, we didn't. The two, there's the victory conditions, which give you mm. points on the objectives, mm -hmm. but then there's also the game end conditions, which is yes. the top one. And yeah. everyone again has a different one, so you never yeah. know when the game is. Going I think to that's a really good mechanic. Yeah, it, uh, it's debatable like whether it. that's good or bad. I like <laughs> it. Um, it strongly depends on your group and yeah. how much you want to be kind of optimized for. Like, mm. but I, I quite like it as well. But it is a thing that you can just the game can just end, and you'll go, oh, I really didn't expect it to end at that point, and apparently I've won. Yeah, which can be uh, weird and anticlimactic. I yes. Guess. I get that. Um, but for the actual game itself, it's very satisfying uh, in a tactile way. Yeah. Like, yeah, chunky meeples. Exploration is yeah. hugely so satisfying. Yes. I have pineapples. They're just the right stuff size. Like, that. like yeah. too yeah. big and they take up too much room. So that's nice. It's got, for saying it's, uh, it's not the simplest Euro in the world. No. But at the same time, for saying that most people would look at this and go, fuck me. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not actually that complex. It's just got a lot of moving parts. I would be very... The thing is, this it's not... Nothing is really complicated, but there are so many moving parts that it can be very overwhelming to remember all the things. Like, yeah. for example, half the time I was like, I have no idea when anything's are. I'll just choose a random one. The turns are very long because yeah. there's so much yeah. administration. There's so much. Yeah. The turn... I feel like the turn... Like, the game could be a lot shorter if you didn't have to administrate yeah. so much. If there was an app. Yeah, like yeah, that. like, if all it this just happened automatically, yeah. But I think the same could be said of a lot of... Euros with lots of cubes. Yeah, and stuff. I mean, but, this is a Euro yeah, game. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I wouldn't change the cubes for anything. I mean, oh, ad yeah. admittedly, th those were our first couple of games, and it would get, f of course, it would get faster. Yeah. The more, the more be you prepared play. to be a so little Even the away. second game was a lot faster. Yeah, can I also just say, okay, so each of the actions you can do aren't horrifically complicated, but there's so many of them. It's like five, maybe six pages. Of text mm. in the book, How and like trying to explain little... all that to someone the first time. Yeah, yeah. Is... We discussed this. We discussed it in the playthrough. This game needs a cheat sheet. Yeah. Really bad, and there isn't one. I mean, there's this, but that's not helpful. Show it to someone like, what the hell does no, that mean? No, but that that's just it. that just limits. That's just there but to limit what you can. You do. could argue that yeah. tells you the actions you could take, but it's so oh, unhelpful. It's, 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 it's not helpful. Yeah. Exactly. This this game is in bad need of just a single. Regular playing card size. Yeah. What's the that? Just that. Yeah. With the individual you actions you can take and a very brief summary of them on, on both sides. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's all it would take. Or even on the back. Like, the back of the thing does have explanations for the victory and the end conditions, but... But, just, but what we're talking about is how you play it, which yeah. is a different thing from that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but if you, just a little action summary. Would it, would, it would be nice. Makes all the difference. I don't think it would fit on, like, a playing card, but... Two sides of a playing card. I think you probably could, just the yeah. actions. A list of the actions you can take and a rough idea of what, what they do, I think. Then maybe a turn order on the back or something. Yeah, yeah you could do that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I think my, funnily enough, this is, this is very much a personal opinion about the game, but my biggest complaint about the game beyond everything else is like some of the mechanics seem a little at odds with others in some ways. This is probably just me, but for example, the exploration is really cool and you're like, oh, I want to go and find new lands and that, I find that really fun. This is the sort of thing I enjoy. And then landing somewhere. But then because of the game mechanics, 
if you continue to explore, you get lots of the rebellion. And unless you want rebellion, you then have to stop exploring immediately. But that's not, which is a really good mechanic. I would I would say that's not a game mechanic at odds with itself. I'd yeah. say that's a game mechanic at odds with the game you want that isn't this game. Yeah, I know. And I'm just like, I want to explore the pretty tiles like and get saying, the resources. And isn't things, it such so. a shame that the more pineapple you sell, the less expensive it becomes? Like it really limits how much pineapple you can sell. <laughs> but yeah. but basically, when I opened this game, I was hoping you, for a game I wanted that it wasn't. pineapple tycoon. <laughs> 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 I wanted exploration with pineapple tiger. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Just be prepared, though. You might yeah. open this game and think it's all about getting all the resources and exploration. It's, it's not totally that. Not it is that. not that. That's what I thought it's it was about, going to be. It's, it's about a slow build of resources yeah. and controlling the ones you already have. And lots of other things going on. Like, you might yeah. win without any resources at all, in a way. There's, yes. a, there's so many other ways of winning. Like, yeah. it's not actually... And those are opaque. Yeah. And this, this sounds yeah. like we're complaining a lot. Not, really. No, no, I don't think so. I would come back to there's a more of a story element to it. Yes. Because that you, you play characters. Yeah. And as Indeed. an individual, you obviously have different objectives that aren't always to do with the economy or mm -hmm. exploration. Yeah. Absolutely. So rather than just having end game objectives, which are straightforward and about that, you don't necessarily. Is it, they've tried to put a story sort of yeah. character that's, element into it. That's actually a really good point. I do. I, I agree. I do think the opaque victory. I don't know if you kind of get what I'm saying. No, no. I I think I think what you're saying yeah. is that the the way in which the victory conditions are structured and how they're opaque and how they're different to each other means that you get a more vibrant. Yeah. storytelling experience to the game yeah. which I thoroughly agree with which is good that and is actually, a good thing about the game I've been framing this as a difficulty because I know that a lot of people would find it a difficult thing to have mm. but I do like it yeah. um, I was surprised how much I like this game mm -hmm. because I you don't like Euros do you? well I say that but I literally think this and the village are the only ones I've ever played Mm -hmm. But I just I'm a sucker for a marriage rash. Like mm. give me miniatures and I'm happy. I'm happy yeah. But no, this was this this was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, and as a euro to put on, we're not experts on euros. No. Mm -hmm. um, and I suddenly realised I haven't even explained what a euro is to people who may not know that a euro is a particular kind of traditional, uh, traditionally European game. It has a lot of resource management and uh, worker placement and a lot, a lot of meeples and, and wooden often cubes taxes. and often has, a, like taxes. often has a lot of moving parts yeah. and is generally, usually a lot of them are historical or strategic yeah. and, and kind of, mm. I guess, drier than, you know, I don't know, blowing zombies head off mm. in a post-apocalyptic yeah. setting or whatever. Mm. Um, we, we are by no means experts on Euros here. Like I say, I think I've only played this in the village. And Carcassonne. I've played Carcassonne. Yeah, that's a bit. Um, yeah. This is yeah. better than online. No, Spurby. Spurby's kind of a Euro. It's, yeah, I would it's describe it as Euro spirit. Euro yeah. inspired as opposed Euro to Euro. What about, would you say Settlers of Catan is Euro game? Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think that's like the prototype, yeah. basic, yeah. like simplest Euro. That Euro is developed. That, yeah. that kind of, that, yeah. that, you, that bleeds off. You can off see the inspiration. Of that, that, I guess some way yeah. yeah, and I think like... I'm not sure I'd say this is a good Euro to introduce people to those kind of games. I think I'd want something with less moving parts than that. Something like The Village, but, which I really enjoy. But this is a very good Euro for, for people who might like, might like a lot of the aspects of Euro games, but yes. they don't want pure resource to win. They yeah. don't want that, because that's what a lot of Euro games are about. You know, win, have the most resources, and have it, the most money, and you win. It does, seem, it does seem to be a game with a very variable playtime, yeah. which you might like or not like. Yeah. Um, you can definitely play really long games of this, mm. or... Quite quite quick. I'll play through. I mean, spoilers. Even though it's on the video yeah. thumbnail, uh, an hour and a half. Oh, well, that was quite we, quick we, actually. We played a, a game of Archipelago, and mm. so that was pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean that's our opinion. Nice I, I, I like I like Archipelago. I like Archipelago. I just, it's a very specific game that you might not get in the table an awful lot mm. unless you were playing with a lot of people who are really into mm -hmm. moving part Euro games. Uh, but it tells. Quite a nice little narrative, like you say, and it's interesting in a number of ways. It's fun. I get on the table all the time to play with the hexes. Yeah, and you just you build, try, you try to build an entire coherent archipelago. I'm kind of and you can't, you it's not that it. easy. I challenge you to do it. Can actually work all yes. pieces in. Send us your photos. And then you just try to do like a, a series of items. Yeah, there's, there's, there's mountains that. Work. Yeah, no, it didn't work either. Mm. So, moving on from the mechanics of the game. And if political stuff, uh, politics being life, so, you know, Shall we? make of that what you will. 
Shall we? I was going to say, shall we just show the cover art to demonstrate first yeah, of all kind of what we're talking about? Let's with do this. The glasses let's, are coming off. Let's just see if I can find that particular yeah. card. That particular that card. To talk about. So, Archipelago oh, is. is a game, as we've mentioned before, set in the um, 1500s to 1800s period of global co uh, colonialism. Um, and I say that period of global colonialism because, I'm, as I'm sure we discuss later, global colonialism hasn't stopped. Um, which is why it's, this game is a bit, ooh, buzzword, problematic. <laughs> I like it's hairy. But... <laughs> it is hairy. Hairy. Yeah. Hairy. It is hairy. Yeah. Um, so what we've got is a game that, by the very nature of a game, mm -hmm. is making somewhat light of a horrific global phenomenon that continues to this day around the world. Um, of primarily European, but not entirely European, um, also uh, Japanese, Chinese, um, and nowadays American, um, and other yeah, countries you could argue anyway, yeah. um, expansion and exploitation of um, peoples in other parts of the world. Yeah. Now, the game, I'm going to ramble for a bit, but I, I am not actually... I, it's not. I'm just going to ramble for a bit because I always start off the rambles. But um, you're not alone in this. Right? I'm not alone in this. Yes. So, um, and there's at least one other person around the table who's probably better place to comment on this than me. So, I. Um, so the game tries to cover this, and it doesn't. While while I don't think it makes a horrific mess up of it in a way that it could be done. At least it tries to address these things. By having it doesn't, for example, um, bad use of the word whitewash it, um, by having like no mention of the bad aspects of it. Mm -hmm. You know, there are cards you can get that are things like slavery. It doesn't romanticise it. It doesn't romanticise it. It doesn't do a kind of golden age of, yeah. of sort of thing. It doesn't do that. Factual. But at the same time, it's it neither does it confront it. No. Yeah. Um, so you've... And while you could say that mechanically it makes some effort towards doing so, for example, here we go, here's the slavery card. So with the slavery card you can pay some resources, and to do that you can basically re reuse citizens under your control, drive them harder to do multiple actions per turn, mm. but it adds to your rebellion. Mm -hmm. So, I would say that this is the thing, okay, like at the very least it introduces a negative aspect mm -hmm. for doing it. It doesn't say, sla you know, slavery's really useful it also introduces an aspect of uh in whatever way you want to say it's introducing in as much as you can introduce agency for a little car like <laughs> yeah. face yeah. it introduces an agency in that saying people don't like it when you do that to them but i guess yeah. so that's but. the thing that could be that could be done for but here's here's the thing it's not trying to represent any particular specific time or specific people, because as we've said, the artwork, so for example, the artwork on the cover is kind of Mesoamerica, uh, conquistadors coming ashore, blah, 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 all very pretty um, and nice. Whereas the the symbol for native unrest is a uh, like a snarling Maori warrior. Mm -hmm. um, and there's definitely, it looks a bit Polynesian on there as well, like to me. Here's a, here's a, a note, tongue extended, which means I'm going to eat you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not, that's actually... Why? Can I say, yeah, I found the Barbarian card. Uh, the Barbarian card, which is also, yes, a very similar Maori, Maori warrior. Yeah. Um, so this is a bit of a mixed one here. It's like, well, is the, are there subjects that we shouldn't make games about? Mm -hmm. I would say no, but it is the responsibility of the game maker to either try and represent something in an ultra-realistic fashion in order to, to fully bring out nuance of that. Yep. Or for them to do it subtextually by, you know, making Archipelago, which is a game of, you know, the exact same game, but you're colonising Mars mm -hmm. and you're using Alien. And then you can yep. talk about it in a subtextual way yep. that might not have which artwork... Which would be directly insulting to cultures that still exist. Yes. Yeah, exactly. yeah. You know, if you're, if you're um, um, someone of Maori descent living in New Zealand, you might go, huh... Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. like yeah. you know, and, and it, depending on the individual, that might not bother you at all. And yeah. I'm not here to tell you you should be bothered. You know, it's your fucking culture, not mine. Yeah. But like, I can see some people 
primarily, I guess, people of um, colonially exploited descent. Although, hell, there's plenty of liberal white guilt people like me too. Mm-hmm. Um, although, whether we our feelings should be considered as another matter. Like, having an issue with the fundamental principle of this game, which is you are playing colon- colonists, colonial forces, going out and exploiting. Mm-hmm. Exploring and exploiting. Yeah. Um, so that's it. I actually don't particularly have a, a place I come down with on this, but I will now... I've rambled enough. I'll back out. Um, if you don't... If I don't mind me just passing the torch, uh, Sky, as the only person here who spent any significant amount of time in former colonial countries... Um, um, I think I would say that in terms of cards like... For example, this one, it's a barbarian with a somewhat, uh, probably not accurate representation of a Maori warrior on it. It's, it's a little generalizing, I would mm-hmm. say, generalizing for, especially for people who are still like their cultures are still very prominent to them. Mm-hmm. It isn't something that... It, it's not like we're talking about a game with Romans. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that's a long time ago. It's a culture that doesn't really exist so much anymore. We're talking about people who... Their cultures are still very important to them and still very a part of who they are. Yeah. And representing Maori people, for example in that light mm. as a sort of a just a rebel as the just rebels. like the rebel the barbarian yeah. like scary people who are going to come and like beat you up in the night mm. type thing it's, like, it's a little hairy mm. it's a yeah. bit it's a bit especially in the weird hodgepodge way yeah. it's very hodgepodge yeah, yeah. It, it, it is it's, it's, a, like... it's sort of the question of whether you should use those kind of cultures at all mm. in this respect yeah and I think that that weirdly, by making it a hodgepodge, I I actually am of the opinion they probably did that because they thought that would lessen the blow. Yeah, I and I can worse. get that thinking, but it's so much worse. Yeah, because yeah. it's kind of insulting. That it's like it, they didn't think about it. Because at least really... you could say, and it is a bit of a default dickhead argument, but at least you could say if it was a very specific time and place that it's like, well, this is what happened. Yeah, that's the realism exactly, of it. Yeah. Think... and if it makes you uncomfortable, good, because yeah. you should be. Yeah, I think unfortunately. I don't know much about the game makers, but yeah. from the impression I get, they tried, but they also didn't realize that as part of a sort of like Western culture, there are so many things that are ingrained in your psyche, and whatever you create, that will come out in it. Like, your, what, whatever prejudices you have, whatever sort of wrong ideas you have of other cultures... Mm. will just come out in whatever sort of creative endeavour you're putting yourself into. Mm. And so looking at this game, there it's just rife with sort of possible sort of insults for mm. people of like those cultures. Yeah. Well, just... Never mind never mind the overarching sort of like colonization theme. Yeah. Um, and I think See, this is the thing, and this is where it kind of starts to butt into, well, like, if things happened historically, can't we represent them because we're representing that historical period? And the answer is, yes, of course you can, but you need, you just need to be... The problem is, as with many things where people end up complaining that... If, if someone says, that's a bit inappropriate or whatever language you want to use, and someone else says, but that's how it's happened. You're trying to, you know, like, case history. Rewrite trying, history. Rewrite history or whatever. This is the thing. History is far more complex, and other cultures and our cultures are far more complex than can be represented very simply in, in a thing like this, okay? Yeah. So here's the thing for you for a start, which is, I guess, you know, one of the things that's always an uncomfortable truth when you start looking into these things. The primary method by which most colonial forces used to repress and control 
other cultures around the world were the established elites of that culture. Let's use a slightly less controversial example of the Romans. Um, the main thing that Romans did when they arrived in a new country was recruit the local nobility because they knew that that was the easiest and best way. Assimilate the nobles, you can then control everyone else. And you see that in other colonial forces through history to the world. Although, arguably, it's a case of you join us or we're going to... Yeah, of course, anyway. and that in itself has complexity to it, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, you know, why... So nobles don't have a choice, but if they get on board, it's easier for yeah. them Ab and absolutely. for colonists. Which is why yeah. the main source of um, slaves in the uh, Atlantic slave trade were obtained from other African tribes yeah. who would, you know, go and kill the tribe they didn't like and capture a load of them for slavery and then sell them on yeah. to white slavers who'd then traffic them across yeah. the Atlantic. So there's so many levels of nuance of awfulness yeah. that it's like if you try and portray it in this simplistic way and just go, oh, well, that's history. Yeah. No, it's not history. Yeah, and totally that's wrong. the thing. You've simplified history and therefore you've simplified... But yeah, technically, you've also simplified your own your own Western culture, but yeah. we're doing fine. So, like, <laughs> yeah. there is a power dynamic there, and you know, like, mm. we are the winners at the moment. Yeah. So, like, it, no, but it's the yeah. way to think about it, isn't yeah. it? Like, it's then in that becomes that, satire. We're the ones making the game. We're the ones producing in this. In terms of the history thing, this is obviously very simple, and you've probably heard it before. But history is about who writes it. Mm. Um, and often when games and films, books, like, about this kind of stuff are written and created, it's from Western sources. And if you're looking to maybe make something that could be considered, like, a little bit hairy, like maybe a game about colonisation, um, I think it becomes very clear sometimes when you haven't gone and talked to um, basically those who were oppressed mm. or people who aren't Western. Basically, you haven't you yeah. haven't looked at their sources. You haven't talked to them. Yeah. You haven't like you've obviously just read the basic history books yeah. and gone. Well, this is what it was. Those books are written generally by white people. Mm. Um, also in terms of what we were saying just before I interrupted you about um, whether we're like, you know, the winners yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. The other thing is I think a lot of people think, well, this isn't relevant, like um, colonialism is over. Like we don't, for example, Britain as an empire doesn't technically control any countries in Africa, for example, anymore. But that doesn't mean they aren't still feeling the effects, and they feel the effects every day, and mm. it's, I, it's I quite it's something you... that's really, it, it's not, you can, if you go there, and you know what you're looking for, it comes, it's painfully obvious, really, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that they are in a bad place, and in, in a lot of cases it's because of, sort of, colonialism, um, there's some terrible arguments where people say, oh, well, you know, they did bad after we left because we helped them so much. And it's like, no. <laughs> because in that time they could have done their own thing Absolutely. and had their own advancements. But what you did was come in, go, let's play God, give you yeah. everything, take it and, all away. And the thing, is, the thing is, yeah. I feel a lot of this is because... and. Hey, historical ethnocentrism, my good old favourite topic. Mm -hmm. A lot of this is because we, a lot of modern people will look at former colonial countries mm. and we'll look at where they were when we left and where they are now yeah. and where they were when we were there and go, what, like that, we were helping them thing? No, 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 no. Yeah. You wrecked them yeah. and then built them up from nothing yeah. Yeah. because you drove them down to nothing. Mm -hmm. That's the point. It's this point of view that during uh, you know, the, the Middle Ages or however you want to phrase that particular period of time, that Europe was and certain parts of Asia were kind of the only yeah. civilised... 
Yeah. Absolutely not. Mm. Um, go research the ruins of Great Zimbabwe, if you don't believe me, yeah. um, and huge continent-spanning empires in Meso and South America. Yeah. Um, look at... And, and, hey, here's the thing. Have you ever um, seen representation in any kind of media or been to visit or anything like that? Any of the great Native American cities? No, you haven't, because we killed everyone who lived there. Yeah. And there were Native American cities, and they're literally nowhere to be found yeah. now. Because they're gone. Because mm -hmm. yeah. everyone there died. Think, anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so this is the thing. History is more complex. I would say, I, I kind of, I feel we should wrap this up, because yeah. otherwise, and I am aware of the the kind of shitty nature of we are four white people with British accents yeah, that's, sitting around yeah. talking yeah. about this. Mm -hmm. we, I am aware of this, so whatever. And if you want to call us SHJW assholes, thanks, actually. Yeah, that's great. I will. I, I appreciate that. SJW? SWJ. Social justice warrior. I wasn't listening. Not social warrior justice. Mm. Social warrior justice. <laughs> that would be amazing. The, yes. Although I, I think I'm more of a social justice rogue, but we'll, we'll <laughs> yeah. move on from Stand that. And, the one, and I but, just have a horrible guilty chip on my shoulder. Yeah. 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 Um, um, so anyway, um, for context, because you don't, uh, Sky grew up in Africa and yeah. New Zealand. Mm -hmm. um, I come from a colonial background, yeah, basically. So, yeah. so, the one thing um, I was going to say really quickly is I think a lot of people might watch this and kind of go, oh, but this is stupid. It's just a game. Like, why, are you, why do you care about this? You know, just look at the mechanics and things like that. But the thing is, Imagine someone created a game about the Holocaust. I know this is extreme. Which I'm sure do exist. Yeah, exactly. But like... Like a workplace Exactly. Game. But oh. no matter how much you get into the mechanics of that, people are going to be horrified yeah. by that. That's a horrifying uh, subject. Uh, and like, uh, for some reason, colonialism is acceptable. But it is yeah. still... Like, and slavery is still exists. Yes. Why is this, this more is, acceptable? Even, this is, if it's, even if it is a, a hairy subject, yeah. even, even if it is a Holocaust game, and even if perhaps people... Do play games like that. There are plenty of video games. But you can do those play, kind of. You can do yeah. that. You just have to be very but, sensitive. But that doesn't mean isn't. people don't want to discuss it. Yeah, yeah. But you just yeah. you have to be more sensitive than this game is in that case. I, yeah. I, I think so, and I think the thing is that the, the time argument is kind of a fa I mean, it's a fallacy in a number of ways because for a start, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Um, there's a Louis C.K. line which is slavery in America is two seventy-five year old women living back to back. Yeah. Like mm. it's it, it really wasn't that long ago, and even if you go, it's done now. A, the after effects are still being felt so keenly. Yeah. B, it still does exist in certain yeah. parts of the world. Yeah, so anyway, is. I think it could have been mitigated in this game by either make it. I think as I've already mentioned, making it subtextual mm -hmm. and moving it to Mars or whatever, and making you know yeah. the natives aliens or it's something yeah. to lessen that immediate blow of this is about me mm -hmm. or like my grandparents or, or yeah. whatever yeah. Um, or by removing the kind of this could be anywhere aspect making it specific to a more specific area which I always kind of got the impression was meant to be the Caribbean and Mesoamerica despite yeah. the, a yeah, couple of Maori warriors I, randomly that, scattered that was the other issue is it They've chosen a setting anyway, they're just kind of... Yeah, they're just stuck some more racial profiling in there just to try and make it a bit more... Ooh, yeah. where is it? Yeah. But, um, and making it to a more specific area and also doing a bit more work in the into the complexities of it and reflecting that, not necessarily in the mechanics of yeah. the game, but in like the subjects of the cards, flavor, maybe, the artwork yeah. and things yeah. like that, I think could have done it. And as, as Sky quite rightly said... Um, maybe produce that increased level of cultural sensitivity by going out and if you set it in, for example, Mesoamerica, talking to a Mexican academic mm. who is an expert it's on... It's not hard, we have the internet nowadays. We have the you internet don't have nowadays. to go to Mexico and, and you can just send them an email. It is quite possible, <laughs> it's possible yeah. that uh, Christoph Bellinger, Bellinger, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, not that you'll be watching this, um, <laughs> did that and this is just what came out and, and fine yeah. we're not pointing a finger yeah. at the specific designer of this game but it is something that could be helpful if, it you, could want be helpful. To, if you want to do and it's just it's yeah. notable enough in this game mm, that is. four guilty white liberals <laughs> felt a bit uncomfortable playing it mm. but not so game much game that we won't play it again oh no yeah the only problem with this discussion is that it's so serious that it makes my upcoming complaint about the tray inlay. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I think that train lane is racist. Yeah, it is. It is. What's? Oh god. I don't. I don't think I want to know what train lane is. It's gonna overwhelm me. Did just not score the but components It's, it's just well. that you need to. It does. Okay. It doesn't. Have... <laughs> Important stuff. Note. Important stuff. John's plowing ahead. Go. Go. I want to hear this. It doesn't store stuff in transit very, very well, but that's not a big thing. The main thing is that you need to use this stuff and you need to keep getting stuff out and it would be really handy if you could actually take it out and like hand it around like you do with the hexes, but you just have to hand the whole box around. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go back to talking about And in many I ways, <laughs> that's worse. <laughs> yeah. It's um, so... I think, I think that, that, is, that is a good actually. Yeah, it, is, it, is that, is good that is a good criticism. That is good. Um, <laughs> I think I think we've done the whole yeah. post-colonial <laughs> thing to death mm. now. Um, were you were you sitting there the whole conversation? Sorry, like just like oh, but the train, but the train. <laughs> the train. Um, no, but I was sitting this whole. I realized during this video that the way you get new workers is actually really weird because really? you just discover them. And then mm, they're added yeah. to your workforce, and they only get unhappy when there's too many of them. Yeah. Because there are no jobs, but the you, in. It is weird. Back, back weird. to the train. Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> another another reason it would be very helpful if people passed that around was that if your objective is to get rid of all of these, yeah, yeah. you need to see, you need to see them. them and, and unless I mean game. in a game that we played that was not recorded. Um, I was luckily sat right next to the box. Yeah. So to be, on to be fair, if I sat on the other side, I would have no idea. Why. To be fair, these are intentionally separated into three piles, and when each of the piles go down, you get another action disc. So oh, like yeah. another action disc. Yeah. 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 So you are notified of it. But so you're not notified. You have to keep an eye on everybody and count it up. Yeah, to keep how it's going. It'd just yeah. be nice if you could check on it once you in a while have someone without to play the looking banker. suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> you want to end this? Don't make them stop talking. <laughs> Um, the, uh, no, all valid points. I think we talked enough about this. Yeah. Um, if you want to leave a comment saying that you don't want to hear politics in our board game stuff, then it's tough fine. Shit. It, yeah, tough shit. It's not, yeah, just, don't, just don't watch it. Literally, don't watch it. Yeah. You have the power. It's under your control. It's amazing. But still support um, us on Patreon. But still like support us on Patreon. Uh, hit like subscribe. <laughs> no. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, uh, we've got a bunch of other board game overviews. We've got a playthrough of this down in the video description below. Uh, that doesn't have really any politics, if that's your thing, so fine. Um, and yeah, let us know what you think of Archipelago. Mm -hmm. We like um, it. Yeah, we, we like it. Mm -hmm. Despite I... some cultural uh, yeah. Like it. yeah, you it, like it was it. bad enough that it actually it didn't made, but, but, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's but it did, if it's big... Also, I, I actually didn't really like the mechanics that much. I don't think I like okay, administration right. games that yeah, much yeah. anyway. Okay, that's better then. But I can, I can see its merit on its own back. Other than just what I don't yeah, like. Of so. just the way it's built. And stuff. Yeah, I, I don't think I'd like this kind of setup anyway. Yeah, no, fair enough. That's fair. Too mm -hmm. many numbers and. It, mm -hmm. Euros, definitely not for everyone. Mm -hmm. I do like Settlers of, of Catan though. I really but it's like a lot simpler. Yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, yeah. That, was a, that was probably a real long overview. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.